Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast. And these are 10 Japanese films from the 1940s that you should watch. Let's do it. Late Spring, 1949. This film by Yasujiro Ozu is about Noriko, a 27-year-old woman who is still living in her childhood home. Everybody tries to talk her into marrying, but Noriko wants to stay at home to care for her widowed father. Now, most fans of this director list Late Spring as one of their favorites, and it's very easy to see why. The dramatic elements are well done, character development is solid, and comedy is sprinkled in throughout the story. Setsuku Hara is fantastic in the lead role. If you're unfamiliar with Ozu, this is a great place to start, and it'll give you a good idea of what to expect from much of his filmography. Spring Awakens, 1947. This is a coming-of-age film by Mikio Naruse that concerns some teens who become curious about sexuality. Now, there's lots of pleasant, cheerful character interaction with references and plot elements relating to sex and pregnancy, but specific dialogue concerning the subject is mostly avoided. There's a certain purity in this film's entertainment value that really won me over. I actually think this is one of Naruse's breeziest and most purely enjoyable films. Snow Trail, 1947. Three bank robbers flee the police and escape into the mountains in this film directed by Senkichi T Taniguchi. Now this is very engaging and interesting stuff. Tons of snowy natural environments to enjoy. There's an impressive avalanche scene and a skiing scene as well, which must have been challenging to make. It actually stars Toshiro Mifune, a fan favorite, in his first film role, and Takashi Shimura to boot, with a script written by Akira Kurosawa, of all people. So, in some ways, this film is rather historic as an early collaboration between these talents who would work with one another fairly often in the future. Check this one out if you haven't already. It seems to have gone under the radar. Children of the Beehive, 1948. This movie by Hiroshi Shimitsu focuses on the plight of some war orphans hailing from different cities across Japan. With nowhere to go, they scavenge around train stations, scratching out an existence by means of black market work. Now soon they find a role model in the figure of a nameless soldier just repatriated after the war. Much focus is placed on the children characters, which provides a solid foundation for the film. There are also some stunning shots of a devastated Hiroshima only a few years after the bombs were dropped. This is a good film. The Ball at the Anjo House, 1947. After Japan's loss in World War II, the wealthy Anjo family have to give up their mansion and their way of life after being burdened with enormous debts. Now They decide to hold one last extravagant ball, but tensions between the guests bubble under the surface. Now this is an ensemble film with a number of characters and relationships, but they all receive proper development and create a lot of stimulating interaction. Setsuko Hara is at her most beautiful here and also gives one of her best performances, and that's saying something. It was directed by Kozaburo Yoshimura. Hideko the Bus Conductress, 1941. A bus conductor, played by Hideko Takamine, attempts to solve the bus company's low revenues by providing ongoing commentary to the patrons. Now, this film by Makiro Narose is similar in some ways to Hiroshi Shimizu's film Mr. Thank You, but is generally superior, in my opinion, with a more absorbing storyline and a talented young lead actress who easily holds a screen from start to finish. The well-placed humor creates a pleasant mood, and at only 54 minutes, this flies right by. The Yotsuya Phantom, 1949. This is Keizuke Kinoshita's version of the popular Yotsuya ghost story. Now, the long 158-minute runtime, which is broken into two parts, is used to add more detail than most other installments or adaptations. Now, consequently, there's a strong dramatic foundation with good character and plot development. Iemon is shown as a more conflicted individual here, instead of an entirely cold-hearted scumbag like in other adaptations. Kinuyo Tanaka, another big-time actress that we're covering here, 
plays two separate roles in this, sisters who look alike. There's almost no supernatural horror at all, however, so I don't even think I would really classify this as a horror film per se. Uh, and the ending is entirely different than most versions of the story, but definitely worth checking out. The Love of Sumako, the Actress, 1947. The main plot of this Kenji Mitsoguchi film involves a theater group that wishes to break away from Kabuki to, to explore the European classics. Now, the second plot concerns the stage actress, who has an affair with the director. Now, much of the entertainment value here comes from the rehearsals and the plays themselves, which are featured quite often. Kunuyo Tanaka also shows up in this film and gives a good performance as usual, which is expected if you're familiar with this, this actress. Another good one to seek out. The Girl I Loved, 1946. Now, set mainly on a ranch in the countryside, a man falls in love with a woman who has been brought up as his adopted sister in this film by, by Keizuke Kinoshita. Now, this is more of an everyday living kind of film. It focuses entirely on the interaction between the leads. Now, sure, it is a bit on the simplistic side when compared to some of the other movies on this list, but there is a certain chemistry on display between these actors that really works, and I really like the ending as well. Worth checking out. A Hen in the Wind, 1948. After her son is inflicted with illness, a woman endures a night of prostitution to pay the medical bills in this film by Yasujiro Ozu. Now, this obviously has a darker tone than a typical Ozu film that is known to, to viewers out there, especially during the latter half when the husband returns from the war. Now, one sequence is actually quite startling and unexpected. And guess what? Kanuyo Tanaka also stars in this film. She was a prominent performer in her time, and it's easy to see why. Not only is she talented, but she picked good roles and had connections with some of the most highly acclaimed directors of the time. A Hen in the Wind is another worthy title in her filmography. So there you have it. Ten Japanese films from the 1940s that you should watch. Titles of these films are listed in the description box below. Again, I will not be providing availability info in this playlist because most of these films I saw years ago. Availability changes all the time. My usual method for checking availability is actually Google, so be sure to seek out any films that seem interesting to you. I know a few of these are on the Criterion channel, and a few are on YouTube. Um, I'm not sure about some of the others. There might be some DVD uh, physical releases out there floating around as well for you. So check these out, though. There's some pretty interesting stuff during this decade. And as always, we'll see you next time.